Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video we're going to be continuing on with the first person player pawn series. And uh, in this video we're going to be making an aim down sight mechanic, similar to what you would see in, say, Call of Duty or, or Borderlands, that kind of game. And that means that I've got some more animations for you guys, so make sure to check down in the description of the video and re-download the, uh, the assets pack, because there's a few more things, basically just uh, a small handful of these uh, ADS animations that we're going to be using going forward. And just as a reminder, uh, these are non-commercial use assets only, so you can't use them in any sort of paid product, but you can use them for practice and for whatever else you want to make, any personal project, that kind of thing. So without further ado, let's jump straight in. Let's head to our blueprints folder, open up our FPS pawn BP, and we'll uh, start building this out, start making some ADS mechanics. So first thing, let's just make ourselves a right mouse button, uh, where is it, mouse events, right mouse button, uh, event here and we'll make ourselves a variable. We'll just call this one aim down site and we'll leave it as a boolean. So let's hit compile on that and we'll save it just so that we, uh, we're in control and we're going forward. All right, so let's drag in our aim down site, uh, hold in alt and drag in, you get a set and we'll duplicate this once. So the way that this is gonna work once we just hook this up, so with right mouse button pressed, our ADSs will be true and with our right mouse button released, it'll go back to, to not. So this is a so this is ADS only while the uh, right mouse button is held in. But if you'd like to do ADS toggle, which I know that some people do, just hold in alt and click these just to disconnect and make yourself a flip-flop, a T flip-flop. Then plug the, the pressed right mouse button into the flip-flop. And then same as before, these two, uh, these two booleans as the A and B. So this will be that whenever we press uh, the right mouse button, it's going to toggle between A and B. So if you prefer the toggle uh, method, uh, just use this simple little node here and it will work just fine. But for the sake of this video, we're just gonna leave it to a to a hold down uh, ADS sort of format. And then, uh, well, one thing that we should mention about, uh, about ADS is that if you notice, uh, for example, in Call of Duty or in Borderlands, uh, the camera doesn't move much. It sort of zooms in, there might be some depth of field applied to the camera, but we're not actually switching between two different cameras. It's the arms that are animating to sort of position the, uh, the gun in that. Uh, ADS position, so it's not that disruptive to actual gameplay. There's no, you know, the camera doesn't actually move. Your aim should be the same when you're not in ADS as it is when you are. So with that in mind, uh, we're not going to be moving around the camera. We're just going to be changing the, the sort of way that the, the arms look. So let's make ourselves a timeline, first of all. A timeline is just a simple way to make uh, some basic animation in Blueprints. It's just going to, if we double click our timeline, add ourselves a float track. Well, we'll just call the track float. So it's going to animate a value uh, on the on, as, as long as this uh, length value, which for our uh, ADS transition will be 0 0.15. So just zoom in here, we'll uh, get a bit closer just like that. And then right click and we're gonna make two, uh, two keys. One of them at time zero with a value of zero. The other one at the time 0 0.15 with a value of one. So we're going to be uh, where we go? Here we go. We use these keys here to, uh, to sort of make our make our timeline fit the screen a bit better. So our timeline is going to go send this float from zero to one over a span of zero point one five uh, seconds. This is so that we can use uh, this this float, this animated float, to lurk between two values. For example, with the field of view of the camera and the position of the arms. So let's uh, grab our camera here. We'll need our camera, and out of our camera uh, get here, let's find the set set field of view. So we're going to change the field of view when we're, when we're going into our ADS. So we'll just hook this up from our update. And then from our float, let's make a little bit of space here from our float, let's get ourselves a lerp. A lerp, uh, similar to how it works in material graphs, it's going to take in uh, two values and use this alpha to try and or interpolate between them. So when the alpha is at zero, it'll be showing the A value. When the alpha is at one, it'll be showing the B value and any number in between will be a value in between these two, uh, these two values here. And for our uh, camera, if we select our camera over in our components, we can see our field of view here in camera settings is currently at 90 degrees. That's the, the default field of view for our camera. So our A, uh, when we're at zero, will be 90. And our B, which is gonna be our ADS field of view, we'll set it down to quite low, something like 45 should be fine. And we'll plug in our lerp, lerp into our field of view. With that done, let's uh, grab our, we'll grab our arms here. So our arms, uh, we've back in our, well, way back in the, in the first part of the series, we had to sort of adjust and reposition the arms so that they look good in the, 
in the actual frame. And that means that we have these uh, location and rotation uh, values here that aren't, they're not zero, zero, zero. In other words, like they've, we've, we've had to move the, the arms to make it sort of fit in the frame. And when we're going into ADS, we need to sort of undo a lot of that so that uh, the, the gun is properly centered in the, in the shot. So that's out of our mesh 1P here. We need to find a set relative transform. Set relative transform, there it is. And we'll just right click this pin here. We'll split that so we have access to these values right here in the node. Let's we'll plug this into our set field of view, field of view uh, node. And here in our mesh 1P, what we need is to get these, uh, these values and use them to, to loop in between our ADS uh, values. So let's right click here. Uh, we'll do our transform first. I don't think we need to change rotation much. Anyway, we'll, uh, so we'll lerp, lerp a vector. All right, so far so good. And the A value, that's our uh, zero, our default, like our, our not ADS view, is going to be the same values as the transform, uh, the, as the location values here in our uh, components uh, component tab. So let's set this up. Our A value is going to be, this could be fiddly. It might be worth actually taking a screenshot of our, uh, of our um, values here, just so that it's easier to see them on the screen and you don't have to keep clicking back and forth. But our X, as we can see there is 1.6. Our Y is 7.8. And our Z value is minus 23.6675. And our B value, that's going to be our, uh, our ADS view. We'll keep our X the same. Our Y will be zero and our Z is going to be minus 16. And then we'll plug our alpha here into the float coming out of our timeline. Hope this all makes sense so far. And then we'll just plug our return value into the new transform location of our mesh 1P. So that's the basic functionality here. This will get us into our ADS view. So let's just grab all of this. We will duplicate it with control W because we need to put these values back to zero when we are not in ADS. So plug in our aim down sight boolean into our timeline. We want to, we want to, Invert these numbers here. So our A for our bottom row here will be 45. Our B will be 90. And then we do opposite values here for our uh, vector lap. So that's 1.6 in, uh, in the X of our B, 7.8 for the Y, and minus 23.6675 in the Z. And then our A values are going to be 1.6 for the X, 0 for the Y, and minus 16 for the Z. And that's all set up just fine. We don't have to do anything with the scale, but our rotation, uh, when we're at, uh, let's see, where are we? our mesh 1P. Right, so we have 6.4 degrees in the, in the Z value here. So let's set a new transform rotation to 6.4. And then in our bottom one, uh, that's not right. We want 6.4 in our bottom one, because that'll send us back to where we want to be. We want, uh, I think it's minus 1.3 here in our, uh, ADS relative transform. These values are all going to be different depending on which animations you're using and which, you know, which, which meshes you're using for your arms and that kind of thing. But for these assets, for this video, I believe these values should be accurate, but we can tweak them later on if they're not lining up just right. So with that done, let's hit compile and save. We can even hit play and we can see how our ADS is working so far. So you can see when I hit, when I'm holding in right click, it's uh, changing changing the distance of the camera, changing our field of view, and it's also repositioning our arms, but it's not uh, displaying our uh, ADS animation. To do that, let's just save here. We're gonna go back to our animations folder, open up our arms animation blueprint, and we're gonna make some changes here so that we can, we can properly use our aim down sight. Similarly to how we did in the last video with our weapon switching, we're gonna use another blend pose by Bull to, uh, to switch whether our AK and our Glock are in ADS or not. So let's get away our event graph. What we're gonna need is to cast to our character. We wanna get, get our aim down sight. So we just get this little Boolean here and then we're gonna drag off here, promote this to a variable and we'll just call it ADS in our animation blueprint. Then hook this up to our tree here and uh, we're basically good to go. So now we've, we've casted to the character. If you remember that from when we first set up our animation blueprint, we're just casting, casting to our FPS pawn and setting it as a variable and then Oh, what have I gone? Event graph. There we go. And then just getting getting a variable from our first person player uh, player pawn and making a new boolean in our event graph here. So let's go back to our animation graph. Let's duplicate this blend pose by bool node. 
and I'll disconnect our AK loco here and plug this into false. Because we want to grab our ADS here and plug this into our active value. So when our ADS, when we're not in ADS, our AK is going to work just as it did before. But when we are, we need an ADS pose. So let's duplicate. Well, there we go. Yep, there we go. Duplicate our AK uh, state machine here. We'll change this to AK ADS loco. And then just open them up. And here we have our animation blueprint. It's exactly as it always has been. But we need to change these animations. Let's make our AK arms AK ADS for idle. And we want to make all of these idle. We could cut this down, but just for the sake of simplicity, let's just get it going. Arms AK ADS. Same for the jump loop. Uh, AK ADS. And also for the jump end. But for our run, we'll use our AK ADS run anim. All right. So with that all set up, back in our animation graph, we'll just plug this into true. Hit compile and save. And then when we hit play, oh, something's wrong. Something's, all oh, right, we haven't hooked it up. <laughs> all right, so remember to plug in your blend pose by bool into the active pose, uh, in, into the, the true pose here when we blend our, uh, blend our um, weapon switch boolean value. So let's hit play. And there we go. We have our ADS working just right. Okay, uh, one, thing to do, one thing to notice though is that is that our crosshair is still on screen when we're in ADS. So let's fix that now. So come over to your blueprints folder here in the content browser. Just open up the crosshair HUD uh, widget. And here we go, there's our set crosshair function. Here's our event graph where we're setting our timer by function name. Let's just duplicate this, uh, this node here. We'll plug it in, but we need to make ourselves a new function. So we'll call this one hide during ADS. And I'm just gonna select all and copy because we need to put exactly this title into the function name here at uh, at our event construct, and the time we'll set it to something like zero point one. We don't have to go, you know, as often as our as our set crosshair animated function. So in our hide during ADS, here's all that we have to do. So let's right click, let's get our player character, get player character, pass to our FPS player pawn, and we'll right click this, convert it to a pure cast because we don't need to fire it through the execution graph, and then get our aim down sight. Uh, boolean. Uh, that's the wrong one. Get, get aim downside. There we go. Hold in B and click to get yourself a branch. This is just a simple true false result from a boolean value. We'll plug this into our uh, main uh, input here and then just find ourselves some set visibility nodes. So we'll get a set visibility, duplicate that. You see the target is widget. It's going to apply to the this widget that it's in. That's our target itself and make sure that in our true we want this to be hidden let's compile and save then when we hit play our crosshair disappears when we're in aim down sight so that's working perfectly so let's uh save that and now we'll head back to our um to our player pawn because we need to change our fire animation now because if you see when we're in aim down sight and we shoot see it's still playing the default uh aim down sight uh montage so where's our, where's our shooting? I'm going to move this out of the way. Here we go. Here's our fire, our shooting uh, blueprint here. So let's, uh, we'll move this to the side. We're going to do the same thing for the Glock in a short while. So let's just grab our aim down sight, hold control and drag for a get, hold B and click for a branch. And we'll plug this into the condition and then our branch into the true. And we want this montage to be our false, to be our not ADS. And then we'll just duplicate this and then plug in our uh, montage here into true. And this will be our arms, uh, AK ADS fire and in montage. Just a little quick word on montages. If we go to animations, I've already gone ahead and made uh, one of these for the arms, AK ADS fire, but I don't think I've got one yet for the Glock ADS. There it is, Glock ADS fire and in. So to make an animation montage like we're gonna be using, just right click your animation, get up here to the top to create, and then click create and in montage. And it'll just make a little montage here for your animation, which is just, it's exactly the same as the animation is, but you have a bit more functionality, a little bit more freedom to, to tweak and change things and even add some notifiers if you want to, that kind of thing. All we're gonna change here is our blend time, blend in and blend out. Instead of 0.25 by default, we're gonna set it to 0.1. We're gonna lower the blend time so that it, uh, it blends a bit quicker because it's quite a short animation. So now when we, uh, so we'll come back here to our blueprint here. So this all should work just fine. Let's hit play. 
Is that AK? Is that AK shooting? And then when we aim, when we aim down sight, ah, something's up. What have I missed? Ah, of course, we have to plug in our mesh 1P into our skeletal mesh component. Let's compile that, and we'll have another quick test. That's much better. So now we have shooting working just fine in our aim down sight, and we have our walk animation as well. When we jump, it's just going to be static. I think this works quite well. I mean, you can always just add more animations if you like, and just include them in your, in your state machines, but for the sake of this, I think this works quite well. So that's how we do it with the Glock. Let's just move on, and we'll do it with our... I mean, with the AK, so we want to do it with the Glock uh, now. So the Glock functionality is going to be uh, very similar to how we do it with the AK here. Let's uh, we'll grab grab our Glock logo, make some space, duplicate these nodes. In fact, I might just remove this boolean here. So we're calling off the same boolean for both of these nodes. Not going to be uh, not going to be a problem. Plug in our Glock logo into the false, duplicate our state machine, and then I will also rename it. Uh, we'll name it Glock. Uh, where am I? Glock ADS Loco. And then similarly to how we did it with the AK, I mean, once we plugged everything up, we just need to change these animations from our regular Glock animations to our Glock ADS animations. So our arms Glock ADS anim. That's for idle. And we'll do the same for our jumping arms Glock. Uh, where is it? Block ADS. Here we go. Slightly tedious, <laughs> but you know, once they're all set, you don't have to set them twice. So I guess that's something. Uh, Glock. Oh, that's already Glock ADS. One of the same one. Do 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 do. Glock ADS. And then when we're running, we want the Glock ADS run. And here we go. So let's compile that and save it. And then we'll jump into the game and we'll test out and make sure that it works. So we'll get our pistol out. There we go, there's ADS with the pistol. So the fire the fire animation is still not the, the right one for the Glock, but that's as simple as going back into our first person uh, blueprint here. We'll duplicate this montage just like before. What's going on? There we go. Plug the mesh in this time. And then duplicate our ADS branch here. So come out of the true and then Plug these in true and false and the one that's being uh, sent out of the true here will change to our uh, Glock where are we arms um, Glock ADS fire montage that's the little montage we made just a minute ago we'll hit save on that and then back in our editor here let's test it out so it's all working perfectly and you can see that our animations are centered because all the bullets are landing exactly where they're supposed to be and our ADS system is working perfectly. Okay, so I think that's uh, that's about it when it comes to, to ADS. Very simple way, to, way to, to do things here. We have a few other things that we could explore in future videos. I want to do another video where I optimize the, the system quite a bit because it's, uh, it's getting a little messy and there's a lot of different areas here that we can we can streamline and we can make a, a lot cleaner than it than it currently is. So I'd like to thank you guys for watching this far. I know that I said in my last video, maybe in the uh, one before that, that I'd uh, take a break from the series and make some more art related type things. But there's just so much that you can do with a pawn like this. So many different mechanics we can explore. So many different ways to do things. So, you know, as long as, the, as, long as there's more requests coming in for more FPS uh, related mechanics and that kind of thing, I guess I'll I guess I'll keep going. In the next video, I'm going to be optimizing a lot of these different uh, different mechanics here. For one thing, you notice in our fire um, fire blueprint here that if our ammo is out, like from the last bullet of a clip, then it's not going to play our arms animation. I noticed this in the as I was making this video. So the next one, I'm going to optimize a lot of this stuff, get a lot of this uh, this functionality into the weapons where they belong, and then do some dynamic weapon switching, that kind of thing. Because I know that that was a, that was a fiery little discussion in the comments of the last video. But anyway, thanks guys for watching this far. If you'd like to get in touch with me directly, remember you can always join Discord. I've got a link in the, uh, in the description of all of my videos. So just drop by there if you want to have a chat. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.